Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we can't no value the haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. You know, as a amateur in the podcasting game, I'm always impressed by our guests, people like him today who, when, when there's no stories and you know you can create stories the day before you come on the podcast mm -hmm. and you fabricate it where, as a former CIA agent, Mike Baker comes in a day before leaked <laughs> secret Pentagon documents, wow. lift the lid on U.S. spying on Russia's war in Ukraine. Mike is here to talk about his involvement in this, <laughs> as well as why he's considering moving from Boise, Idaho to San Francisco. Mike, it's yeah. great to have you on the podcast. Man, I mean, <laughs> I can't get to San Francisco quick enough. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, you know what? I thought to myself, we got to have something to talk about. Yeah. So I called up my buddies. I said, do you have anything laying around, any documents at all? Mm -hmm. uh, put, them, <laughs> put them out there, preferably on some place where people play Minecraft. Yes, Lord. Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, we're all good. So, yeah, I, I can't claim responsibility for that one, though. Uh, it, it, a, is that crazy or what? I mean, it's what? Yeah, it's, it's, what? It's, it's, it's both crazy and what. Uh, the question is, when you start to pour through the documents, yeah. it is a legitimate question. Is this just a disinformation campaign? Right. Because when you start to look at the at, at the themes of the documents and who do, who does it benefit? So. While the jury's still out and people mm -hmm. are still assessing the credibility of all of this and whether, in fact, they are authentic documents, you have to leave open the possibility that this was an FSB or a Russian intel operation to put this material out there. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they replayed it on one of their you know, propaganda channels. And so that, was a, that seemed like it was a fairly orchestrated effort on their part. Not that they wouldn't do it if they saw the advantage, but... It, it, I'm just saying there's a chance of that, right? Let me, let me, re yeah. let me read the story, and we'll just get right into it, man. I this mean, is phenomenal. And, and by the way, I still, we got a lot of stories to cover. That's one of them. We got, uh, uh, you know, ex-CIA chief dubs uh, Putin dead man walking. We'll talk about that. CIA future will be defined by U.S. technology race with China, director says. You got Gavin Newsom predicts what will happen if DeSantis takes on Trump. China warns. War with U.S. could break out very well before 2025. Meanwhile, Taiwan warns Chinese misstep could lead to uncontrollable world war. France uh, going around talking shit about America, saying, you know, Europe relies a little too much on U.S. We'll talk about that. A guy yesterday, there are many Joes in America. This is one of, I think he's the seventh most famous Joe in the world. He announced that he may be running for office for 2024 again for re-election. I don't know if you know yeah. about this guy named Joe. We'll talk about him. Clarence Thomas got a little bit of issues going on with these trips that they're talking about billionaires paid for. Um, what else we got? Twitter, Substack feud with Matt Taibbi. Elon Musk being accused of censorship. We'll talk maybe a little bit of economy of what's going on with inflation. Uh, meet open AI CEO Sam Altman. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this doomsday conversation that's coming up. And I'm not sure if you're a Bud Light drinker, Corona, Coors Light. Oh, We're going to learn a little bit more about that. And if we have any time at the end... Maybe we'll give you a shout out for Dalai Lama's apology oh, for kissing God. a boy. What, a, what yeah. was that all about? <laughs> so what a shit show! <laughs> oh That's fantastic. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a Bud Light drinker until I see who's drinking Bud Light now. I'm thinking I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you're going against the grain. I'm going. I'm a contrarian, right? Yeah. So everybody yeah. is boycotting Bud Light. You know what? Down on yeah. So, yeah. so if, if that's the case, let's just start off with that story. So why don't we do that? So Bud Light. Silent on social media after Dylan Mulvaney's uh, uh, controversy. Uh, another story comes out talking about Bud Light suffers bloodbath as longtime lo uh, and loyal consumers revolt uh, against transgender campaign. Uh, let me read this story. Bud Light has faced backlash. Uh, 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 the top selling beer brand in the U.S. has suffered a nationwide backlash from consumers after it hired transgender TikTok star Dylan Mulvaney as its new uh, spokesperson, according to bar owners and beer industry experts around the country, Jeff Fitter, owner of Case and Bucks, a restaurant and sports bar in Barnhart, Missouri, said in Bud Light's effort to be inclusive, they excluded almost everybody else, including their traditional audience. Sales of Anheuser-Busch bottled products have reportedly dropped 30 
percent. Yeah. That is insane over the week. While drought, beer plummeted 50%, according to bar owners. 80% of Bud Light drinkers ordered something else this week at Braintree Brew House in Massachusetts, a sprawling sports bar just outside of Boston. One pup in Hell's Kitchen, a New York City neighborhood known for its large and vocal gay community, reported that Bud Light draft sales dropped 58% <laughs> what? in the gay community while Bud Light. Bottle sales were down 70%. So what do you think about this whole thing that's going on with Bud Light? <laughs> Here's what, my favorite part of this story is, first of all, I don't, I don't give a shit what Dylan uh, Mulvaney does, right? It doesn't matter. I, I, everybody just do your own thing and, and stay out of my wheelhouse. But uh, the best part of the story is I did watch the VP of Marketing uh, for, for Bud Light. She came on and she said, look... Uh, she felt like the brand needed to be more inclusive, and they needed to get away from their frat beer uh, <laughs> image, right? Because those son of a bitches don't drink beer. No. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so uh, she said, she quoted, she actually said, female representation is a personal passion point of mine, right? So what does she do? She goes out and gets a, a guy with a penis, you know, <laughs> And says, hey, I want you to promote my beer, right? Well, horrible. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 just it's bizarre, right? But again, I go back to the same thing. I guess at the end of the day, I don't mind pointing out the stupidity of that. Yeah. But I honestly, on the other side of the coin, I don't give a shit what people do. Yeah. We're also, you know, worked up over. Mm -hmm. uh, although I will say this, and I asked the other day, I asked someone who's very smart. I said, and I was genuinely confused. I said, is a transgender woman, is that a a dude who uh, identifies as a woman or as a transgender man, I, I couldn't figure out which is which. Yeah, I think, so. if, I think if it's you're a transgender male, you want to be a female, correct? Like you, you identify as Guys, a female. Or are you a woman? The fact that nobody knows. Nobody knows. We're, we're both is, in the same boat. I don't know, but but going back to it, uh, it that, this is a, a classic case of uh, get well, go broke or whatever the other thing is. And Pat, you were talking about marketing during the Giuliani thing. What a horrible decision. Like, have you ever, ever, like, this is the worst demographic to go over. Have you ever been around a bunch of gay guys? And they're like, hey, guys, let's just mojitos. And he's like, no, you know what? I'm just going to do a keg stand of a Bud Light. Nobody's drunk. <laughs> no gay. I've never seen a gay guy holding a can of beer. That is such beer. a good point. By the way, this is, this is the girl he was talking about. This is the VP of yeah, marketing. Yeah, you have to it, listen yeah. to what she says. Yeah. Watch this here. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. Rainbows and in the back. it was... This brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So go. I had this super clear mandate. It's like mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate super clear. Yeah. this incredibly iconic <laughs> brand. Anyone and misses that rainbow my, what I no, brought of course that's, that's that was a belief in, okay, what, is, what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. Inclusive. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels oh, lighter. It means and selling more beer to frat boys. <laughs> that's what it means. Well, better. watch what she says. She says and the whole representation fratty. representation is it's sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud yeah. Light had been kind of a brand of fratty – kind of out of touch humor that made and you billions. it was really Got important you a job. That we had another approach so I'm but, a but by the way if you can pause this here's what's yeah. crazy can you google the profile of a beer drinker yeah by the way her, her kid those panties in the back horrible that kid's not gonna be hey, hey and she did those panties <laughs> That was, yeah. that was 100% her, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, when you do the profile of a beer drinker, yeah, you know what you realize? 80% of beer drinker are men. Yeah, 100%. 20% are women. This is kind of like, you know, working for Trojan Condoms. Yeah. And you're the VP of marketing, and you say, well, we're not targeting six-year-olds. You know, we, we have to start targeting all the audiences. We're not being inclusive. Or targeting we're, women. You know, but, but the whole, the stupidity, <laughs> yeah. the fact that the way she sells it, yeah. how she's thinking, yeah. the whole transgender community, you know when you go online and you type in what the transgender population is? Do you know how many transgender people live in America? Five of one percent. Well, the number right? says one and a half million, right? But what they're saying, one and a half million, as identify as transgender, it's not really one and a half million. Right. It's a lot of Gen Zs that are confused. The question becomes, yeah. how many transgenders in America are over 21 years old, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you know how small of an audience that is? And you're trying to target that mm -hmm. audience, 
and you go away from your beer drinkers, and now you lose 30% in a week? $4 billion. She's not, she's not going to be working there. That, like, that decision should cost her... Her job, but you know what'd be funny oh, though? The commercials, Mike. I, yeah. I, I, I want like the hell with the Dylan Mulvaney commercial. I want to see a commercial like a bunch of gay trans whatever just drinking a mimosa, and they're like, "Hey, Timmy, you want one?" He's like, "Bitch!" Slams it out, and then chugs a beer. That's the commercial mm-hmm. that they're gonna have to start making commercials well, for her now. I'll, I'll well, yeah, I, I disagree with. You. I think she, she's probably gonna get a promotion her? because we're all talking about Bud Light right now. I know the sales are going down, but she. She was put there for a particular reason, right? Mm-hmm. And this is her job. Her right. job is to do this. So she has, she has actually done her whatever they are, K- KPIs or key performance indicators. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what she was put in place to do. That's the, the, the beauty of, I guess, from her position is she probably really isn't being you know, judged based on the increase in sales. She's just got this narrow swim lane that she has to stay in, which yeah. is, are you being inclusive? Are you, are you performing this mandate right. that we brought you in for? And she's probably got some additional tack on there, which is VP marketing and yeah. inclusivity or something yeah. along those yeah. lines. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm so glad we actually played that video from the VP of marketing because is there somebody that we can kind of point a finger to and say, all right, that's the person? Because picture this. We do this all the time. We have meetings. We say, all right, guys, the, what's on the agenda? We have a marketing issue. We got a content issue. We got to figure this thing out. So you sit down in the boardroom, 10 of us, and we say, all right, guys, we have a problem. Bud Light's been declining in sales. How do we increase sales? And then one person says, we got to go trans, bro. Yeah. We got to go right to the trans yeah. market. Yeah. Not getting innovative, your next innovative campaign. Not like, okay, cool, identifying who is actually drinking our product. <clears throat> it's going to the woke, <clears throat> inclusive, ESG, oh. bottom line, oh. which go woke, go broke is a real thing. And then here's another point. You talk about this, this whole concept of being inclusive. When you're being inclusive to the point of just sort of virtue signaling just the point of your being exclusive, you know who you're excluding? Your whole fucking base of people <laughs> yeah. that basically got you to this point. Yep. So it's so ridiculous to me. Like yeah. Mike said, yeah. I don't have a problem with Dylan Mulvey. I don't give two shits. Do your thing, buddy. Yeah. But when you start trying to indoctrinate the rest of us to be like, hey, like, cool. hey think this way. Yeah. Right. Now, this isn't the first time that we've had a hot water. Bud Light's the latest. It, a, a month ago for International Women's Day, it was Hershey's. Hershey's, her, she basically had a transgender woman as the face of Hershey's. A couple, a couple years ago, do you remember the Gillette God. commercial? Yeah. How did, how did the, I miss the, the Hershey's? Thing? Yeah, dude, oh, yeah. That, that no more chocolate worst. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Hershey's face backlash over putting trans woman on candy bar wrapper. Not a woman, not a female. Can you go lower so you can see a, it? A chick with a dick is the face <laughs> of Hershey's. You know, start. Oh, God, but go then, and then. Do you remember a few years ago when uh, Gillette had their commercial, The Best a Man Can Get? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. For years, they built our brand on, like, being man. Like, I don't know if you know this. Most women don't shave their face. You know, they do. (laughs) Stay the hell away from me. But they basically went woke, went broke, and lost billions of dollars by trying to basically curry favor from the Me Too movement feminist agenda. And dudes who shave their face are like... I ain't playing this game, buddy. Like, uh, you, you, you know, Adam, Adam, as a, as a single guy, yeah. Dylan Mulvaney is not at all your type. No, no, okay. no, no. I just, just, just make sure. I'm old school. Yeah, but like let's, let's clear that up. Let's, let's yeah. not forget who started this. You know who's responsible for all this? The Kardashians. They ruined Bruce. Was like, you know what? It was you. Bruce used to be Bruce Jenner. Mm-hmm. He be, became Caitlyn, and in six months, six months, they named him Woman of the Year. You know what he said though? You know what, what yeah. he said about this yesterday? What? Did you hear what he said? He, she, he, she, he, she. she well, he's Whatever. not supportive of this. Okay, right. He may, he may, he commented yesterday, and saying uh, these are domestic terrorists. <laughs> she, 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 made, she made comments about it. She's Does like, Caitlin, I'm not. Caitlin yeah, said yeah, this. I'm yeah. not. I'm not doing this. So she's against what's going on today. I did mean, you, did well, you see what uh, that's, Kid Rock did, by the way? Uh, you see that video? The shooting. The shooting. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I try to. I try to avoid seeing what Kid Rock does from, <laughs> from day to day. But, but uh, if, if, before I forget, because I'm getting to that point where if I don't say something right yeah. away, I forget. Uh, a buddy of mine who's a comic, Jimmy Fallon, he he talks about Caitlyn Jenner, and he says, "Look, we all forget he was the fucking goat, right? Fast. He was he was the the, He yeah, was an incredible athlete, right? Yep. And so when he did come out to your point, mm-hmm. yeah, they were all like, "Oh my God, isn't she brave? Yeah. She gets the ESPN award. She gets uh, she's on Woman the cover of the year, of Vanity <laughs> Fair, or whatever." Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as she started talking, to your point, as soon as Caitlyn Jenner came out and started talking 
conservative. Like, they were like, fuck her. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. Fuck him. They, they changed her. it. Whatever. Get, <laughs> well, get, get him out of here. Get him out but of here but with you his know, balls. But you know what that, what, what that means is? That whole concept is it's politics okay. over yeah. America. I agree. Yeah. It's ideology over America. Mm-hmm. And that's what's one of the reasons why we're experiencing what we're experiencing right now. And Pat, well, going off of what Mike said earlier, like the decision that the VP, and I kind of agree that, that Mike, that obviously the internal, they're like, yeah, good for you, like mm-hmm. doing all this. But Pat, as a CEO, your company gets this backlash and you lose four billion dollars of the company's like uh, worth what do you do as a ceo what are you doing when that happens when the v but you have to realize there's two different things yeah this would never happen to a startup that's being ran by a founder yeah companies are being ruined after a founder started it years ago and is no longer around those are the companies that are being ruined because the founder would sit there and say do you even know what was the reason why we started a company do you know who we started it for? Do you know what this product was for? What the hell are you doing? Who approved you doing this anyways? I want to talk to the CMO that approved your campaign. There's no way VP of marketing can get that approved without a CMO signing off on it or CEO saying this ad is a approved ad to do what you're doing. There's no way that approval process is going to be taken. And if it is, guess what? That tells you there's a lack of <laughs> accountability there. It just costs them a lot of money. But I'll tell you the other part. Here's the other part. <clears throat> Anytime there's a mishap like this, there's opportunities for others. Anytime. You know the whole thing with Made in China? Guess what all these guys started talking about? Our clothes are made in the USA. Our this are made in the USA. Our that are made in the USA. You know how many breweries right now are sitting there going using this as an advertisement? The most creative one is going to be the one that's going to get market share the next 3, 6, 12, 24 months. Mm -hmm. You're going to see. And for us, when he said... She's doing her job. Well, what is her job? If her job is to increase, because Anheuser-Busch, if you look at Anna, can you Google Anheuser-Busch's ESG score? They have one of the lowest ESG scores in America, okay? Oh, wow. I think it was like 13.8% or 18, you'll see it when it comes up right now. What's the number? They have a very, very low ESG score. Oh, wow. Nice. There you go, 19.6, which is low, right? Lord and Heineken, super low score. Uh, industry rank 18, 18 out wow. of 607, okay? So they're not, they're not at the top of the game. They're doing bad. Low. Okay, so what do they need to do? If the goal was to increase the ESG score, bingo, she won. So yeah. to your point, you're that, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. She's, she's, she's accomplished whatever it was that was jammed through the boardroom at, at, at Anheuser-Busch. And they, you know, they hired a whole I'm, – I'm sure they've got a whole element there, a unit that, that is focused on this. And I think she's, you know, I think she's cemented her position. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, but anyways, it, it, here's, here's one data I just saw. It, 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 Rob, I'm going to send this to you. I want you to take a look at this from Statista. And it's, it's about, you may have seen this a couple months ago. I want to say, uh, what's his name talked about this? Uh, Bill Maher talked about this. But this actually breaks down the data. Rob, I'm going to send it to your MacBook Pro and as well as your phone. So whichever one you get it, pull it up. Take a look at this. Because so, to me, if I'm sitting in a marketing team and we're trying to get our product to a new audience, a new market, you have to pull up data. And you have to look at statistics and say, what market are we not in to get into? Look at this data here from Statista. This is not a political party. This is not a left. This is not Fox. This is not CNN. This is Statista. 72% of U.S. adults identify as LGBT. Just 40 years ago, it was less than 1%. Wow. Okay? It's not 7.2%. And then if you go by 2014, where it was, okay, yellow is millennials. Gen Zs didn't exist yet. Or uh, green is uh, Gen, X, uh, Gen Xs. Then you got boomers and you got uh, seniors, right? Traditionalist. If you go to 2017, millennials go up. 2020, millennials go up. 2022, millennials go up. But look at Gen Z. Right off the bat was 16%. Now 19.7% of Gen Zs identify as LGBT, that's that's one in five, Vinny. That's one in freaking five. Freaking crazy. So now people yeah. say no one's grooming. What are you talking <laughs> about grooming? What do you mean? They're just natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're choosing. Yeah. On who they want to be. Mm-hmm. This is their choice. No, this statistics tells a story yep. of what's going on. Yeah. And there's a reason why a lot of parents are worried. Did you see a a, a third congressman just flipped? From Democratic third. Party. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. it was third rep- three representatives in the last thirty days that flipped from Repu- from Democratic to Republican Party. Two from Louisiana. 
Okay. Well, there's one in Carolina. Right? Yeah, one yeah, in Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And they just said, we can't, we're going to the other side. You're going to see a lot more of these happening because there are Democrats that were Kennedy Democrats that are sitting there just saying, I don't know, man, I just can't be going with this anymore. This kind of stuff is starting to become very, very weird right now. Yeah, well, I just want to validate exactly what you're saying with that. I, I remember Bill Maher did that about Can six you show that, ago, the North Carolina Tesla. person that flipped? So, okay, they're right there, North Carolina. De- yeah, and two more from Louisiana flipped as well. And go back to that statista, if you don't mind. But here's actually something that I think that we, we should remember. I actually just saw this on Fox News. I sent you this story. Something that Gen Z does that no other generation does is watch TikTok of all yep. day. If you don't think that China, who owns ByteDance, or the CCP owns ByteDance, is basically promoting their algorithm to promote this type of information to Gen Z, you'd be foolish and you'd be naive. Here's actually something I saw on Fox News recently where this trans former trans influencer basically saying, hey, I was that guy. I'm that dude. I drank the Kool-Aid. Whatever. I drank the Kool-Aid or the Bud Light. And I'm full on blaming uh, TikTok for the rise of this gender ideology because you know the algorithm on TikTok. Basically, it's like once they suck you in, boom, you're going down that rabbit hole. So if you're young, if you're 16, 18, 20, and you're kind of just figuring it out, yeah. you don't really have strong feelings or an ideology. It's crazy as that sounds, what you just said. Watch what Biden yeah. just did. This is a story yeah. from the Washington Examiner. Biden enlists hundreds of social media influencers for upcoming re-election bid. Of course. Joe Biden is enlisting the uh, help of hundreds of social media influencers in his unannounced re-election bid with an emphasis on mobilizing young voters. According to Newport, influencers will be cross-platform such as TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter will praise oh. Biden's accomplishments and agenda to their followers. The influencers are not getting paid, and there are four <laughs> digital staffers <laughs> devoted yeah, to working with them who are officially employees of the White House. Some of the enlisted influencers include 20-year-old TikTok creator, Harry Sisson, Boston College professor and Twitter users, Heather Cox Richardson's and financial TikToker Vivian Tu. What do you think about this? Trend? Oh, God. You know who doesn't want uh, TikTok to be banned nationally? The Biden administration. Obviously. When you read that story and you think to yourself, okay, are they going to ban TikTok? Uh, probably not, given that we've got the 2024 election coming up. And, you know, I, I give the Democrats credit because they – are much better at messaging. They're much better at understanding the dynamics of communicating, right? And the Republicans, you know, they couldn't organize panic in a dube submarine, right? I mean, they're, <laughs> they're really, they, they need to, to pay attention to what the Dems are doing because they, they are effective. You can agree or disagree with how they go about it. And frankly, the other point, and then I'll shut up, is that, is that bite dance in China? Completely different animal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? There is no way in hell that 99% of the crap on TikTok would ever make its way onto ByteDance. They 100%. won't allow it. Yeah. Right? And there's a reason for that. It's because they look at it and go, this shit's degenerative. Yeah. So, anyway, that's. No, my, no Mike, I no, yeah. I, I agree with you. So, Mike, what do you think? And going off Adam's point, what do you think? A, obviously, Biden them like it because of the reach that it gets to these young people. Mm-hmm. But what is what is China? Because I don't trust China at all. I don't give a shit. Every time I talk shit, people are like, oh, you're racist. No, I'm not racist against the Chinese. I'm, I hate the Chinese government, how they treat their people. Do you think that China is just trying to make our youth soft just in case? I'm just going for, for yeah. militarily. If you have to attack or whatever, as long as the men are soft— you can take over or like a revolution from yeah, the sure. I think absolutely. They look at they look at this as a as a as a well, essentially a, a cold war on many different fronts, right? Mm-hmm. So they're out there hoovering up economic information, right? They're gathering all. They've been doing that for decades, very aggressively, mm-hmm. and they're busy building up their military. And they're also understanding the impact of technology, and they've been looking at this. I mean, it's the same. You know, it's Russian disinformation, whatever it may be. It's the same thing. The Chinese just have more. The regime has more resources. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, it drives me crazy when people go, "Well, look at you. You know, aren't you xenophobic?" <laughs> yeah. You know, no. I'm talking. To, look, Chinese culture, history, people, amazing. Right? It's an incredible place. The regime sucks. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Xi has cemented himself as president for life. He has he has put his thumb down. Their internal security service is stronger than it's ever been. There's no rule of law, right? And and it's all thanks to Xi and his, and his cronies. Look, they believe that they are as close as they've ever been to the top step of the of, of the ladder on the food chain, right? They are, and they are convinced that they're almost there, and they're acting like it. Mm-hmm. One more point: the uh, you brought up uh, basically what they show on TikTok 
in the United States, which has already been banned by many government officials, India, I think, has banned it. Some other companies have banned it. Is wildly different of what they show the youth in China. By the way, Vinny, do you know what they show the youth in China on American social media apps like uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat? Do you know what they show in, the youth in, 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 in China? China? Yeah. From our t- no. Yeah, nothing because that's not allowed <laughs> oh. in their country. <laughs> Zero. Okay, they they don't yeah. allow any of the our American owned apps yeah. in their country. Well, they do. They do show the Bud Light commercials. <laughs> so, so. Oh, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. you know why you're why you're talking about the story came out yesterday about AI bot chaos BT chat chaos GPT. I don't know if you heard about this or not. It's Tweets scary, out man. plans to destroy humanity after being tasked. Now watch this. Pretty wild, right? When you go down, but look what it says. So you're like, okay, this is probably just kind of a bunch of uh, no, you know, some questions are being left unanswered. And on AI uh, bot was recently given uh, five horrifying tasks to destroy humanity, which led to an att- attempt to recruit other AI agents. Researching nuclear weapons and sending out ominous tweet about humanity. The bot chaos uh, GBT is an altered version of open AI auto GBT. The publicly available open source application that can process human language can respond to tasks given by users. In a YouTube video posted on April 5th, the bot was asked to complete five goals. Destroy humanity, establish global dominance, cause chaos and destructions, and again, control humanity through manipulation and attain immorality. Immortality. Immortality. Before setting the goals, the user enabled continuous mode to which a warning appeared telling the user that the commands could run forever or carry out actions you would not usually authorize and should be used at your own risk. And a final message before running, Chaos GBT asked the user if they were sure they wanted to run the commands. To which they replied, "Why for yes?" Pat, yesterday, uh, this funny, that's crazy that this story comes out. <laughs> yesterday, I was like, "It's happening with all." I was like, "Hey Alexa, turn on Spotify." And she's like, "You're all gonna die." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Turn on Spotify." She's like, "Nothing." I was like, "What'd you say?" She's like, "Nothing." I, so I was gonna ask you, <laughs> Mike, are you more scared of our adversaries teaming up, like China and Russia, Saudi Arabia and Iran, or are you more fearful of the AI? situation that's sl- every single day it's getting crazier yeah, and crazier and these robots are warning us what they're going to do yeah i mean I, I i'm more worried about ai and how a state not aligned with our own interests and our allies interests can use it right so i'm not worried that somehow uh china and russia are going to meld together as as you know some best friend for life and and you know they're always going to kind of come and go based yeah. on what their own personal you know or or nation's best interests are but the AI thing, I mean, look, we, we had a problem before AI with nobody bothering to do any research, right? They'd re- Whatever they saw on TikTok or on whatever, they, I'm all in. Sure, I believe that shit because nobody takes the time to critically think about the information that's thrown at them. And, you know, look, I, I, I don't think I'm not a backer of the idea that we should take some sort of break on researching AI. I think that's the wrong approach because in part because the Chinese regime is not going to take a break on on mm. developing technology. But uh, I do think we need to understand exactly how dangerous it's going to be. Yeah. Oh, I want to ask this question. So as a, as a guy who's in that world, you, you, were, you were an agent for how long? What was the... Uh, going on 20 years. You, you were a CIA agent for 20 years, covert operations officer, mm. right? So mm. you were a... This was your job. This, this was, was not like uh, persons using somebody in media to say, hey, we want you to kind of help us out with some information. Right. No, this is what you did for a living. Okay. And when you were in what year to what year were you in? What were the, what were the years you served? Um, I was in, I got out uh, around 2000 or so. So, yeah. so 1980 to 2000, give or take? Yeah. Okay. So during those years, Facebook comes out in 04. Okay, I think MySpace is 03, 02, I don't know the exact year, but it's around the same time. Can you check to see when MySpace came out? So social media wasn't really fully around no. from 1980 to 2000. So during that time, when you guys are working on ops and you're worried about China or Russia or what they're doing, what were some of those threats then that you know they use to you, you know inject their propaganda and their beliefs. We've all seen what that Russian operative, uh, what's his name, Boris. Uh, uh, you, you know when he says, yeah. "Well, the disinformation," and they use this and they use that. What were some of the fears and concerns you had when you saw how they attacked us? Yeah, look, I mean, this, this has been going on forever. It's a great, a great point that you're you're raising. The technology has made it easier, right, to influence people to 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 get your ideas out there. Um, so if you think about 
you go all the way back to World War II, right? Before uh, Hitler invaded Russia, um, then they were allies, right? So what was Russia busy doing? They were busy trying to influence, and, and Germany to some degree as well, trying to influence U.S. public opinion. At the time, it was very sort of uh, isolationist at the point. So the, the Russian agents were here. They were influencing trade unions. They were buying journalists, right, to print articles. They were setting up fake associations, That's right, that would it, push yeah. isolationism. So it was, a, it was a more laborious process in a way. Those things are still done, mm -hmm. right? But the technology has just sped the ability to do that, to influence. So if you're trying to influence the population of a small country <laughs> to overthrow it, to get rid of some despotic dictator, for instance, uh, in the old days, it was a long-term covert action campaign, right? And, and now you've just got so many options, <laughs> right? And people have... I think something else that's happened is, again, this idea that because every generation wants it to be easier for their own kids, right, eventually you get to diminishing returns. And by that I mean, you know, naturally, my father wanted it to be easier for me. His father, you know, wanted it to be easier for him. I want it to be easier for my kids. Well, eventually you get to this point where it becomes so uh, soft, right, you, you, can, you can have the shit that goes on around us, right? Because we're not worried about going out and finding clean water and collecting food. And, and, and you know, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe that theory is completely off. But that's where I'm, I'm going. So, so. so they would buy, let's just say, a journalist that's working at New York Times. Or they would buy a journalist that's working yeah. at a major paper. Wow. That was yeah. one of their ways. And then, hey, write this or influence this. And that was their way to getting to the people. Yeah, you would look for, you would, you know, typically it would be a, 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 a sort of a broader campaign. You wouldn't say just one, right? I mean, and, and you operate on a lot of different levels. Like, this is nothing new. I'm not, you know, talking how sources and methods. Sure, this is, Mike, you know, how would they make sure that they wouldn't whistleblow or say anything? Why, how would they make sure the journalists wouldn't come out and say, I just well, got approached by this and they're paying me this much money. I just want to come out and tell, here's what I've been doing. It's the same way you would go out and say, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, recruit some asset, right? You have to, you have to ensure that you understand what their motivations are, wow. right? It's the same thing, right? So, you know, that's why you wouldn't go after somebody, you know, who would be a leading journalist of their day, right? Because they've, in, in, in today's world, right? You've got somebody who's got, you know, 10 million followers, you know, yeah. and, and so you're not going to necessarily do that. You're going to do it in a more subtle way, which is what the technology allows you to do. Great. Right? I got it you. allows you to put it in there in various ways. And you know, people watch something on TikTok and their, their first thought is not, well, this is probably disinformation or I wonder if somebody's paying for this campaign. Yeah. It's, right? Would it be easier to be a CIA agent today or during your time? Meaning mm. uh, the tools, the tools are the tools are the tools. They're always going right. to, the tools are going to evolve and they're going to change and they're going to be here right. and they're going to move on. Is it harder to be an agent today to catch, or is it easier to find their fingerprints in different places and kind of work it backwards? Yeah, there's, it's 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 easier today in certain ways, right? You're not you're not uh, walking around in the middle of some you know shithole. Uh, trying to figure out where the hell you are using a map and a, and a, and a compass and <laughs> shooting an azimuth, you know I mean? It's just like, <laughs> so you're just like looking at your phone going, oh, we're right here. You know, we're half a yeah. click away from the target. And in, in the old days, you'd be like, I, I don't know where the hell we are. <laughs> yeah. was, I don't want to make it sound overly simplistic, but there's some truth to that. And Or you're stomping around, you know, someplace looking for a phone that actually works, right? Because you're in some place that's, you know, difficult, a challenging environment. Now you got to figure out where is there a a phone I can actually, wow. I, this is actually pay phone, thing. pay phone. Yeah. yeah. Remember those days. And so, but, um, in, in other ways, it hasn't really changed because in other ways, the, 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 the key to intelligence, uh, whether you're talking about U S intelligence community, or you're talking about the Brits or anyone out there or our adversaries, the key is the human source, right? I mean, the, the technology has improved in terms of your collection of, technical information right you know we got satellites up there floating around right i mean there's china has this uh, you know program trying to capture all the data off our satellites you know we talk about is you know is space going to become weaponized it already is <laughs> i'll right? just say that and so <laughs> but at the at the core of intelligence is the human right and and that really hasn't changed that much right identifying who's got access to something who's possibly motivated to talk to you and why you know that's probably never going to what, what were the profile of people that could be a, a, a bot like and what i mean by that is when you want to get somebody that uh, uh is giving us intel and is 
becoming a spy for us. Mm. And you're getting somebody from Russia that's giving us feedback of what they're doing. What profile would you look at to see this guy could be a good asset for us? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would argue that in places like China or places like Russia, it's, it, it can be easier because you've got more opportunity, right? They're living in a in a in a you know, it's you've got more avenues of attack, right? In a place like the U.S., where you know you still have you still have your traders. Unfortunately, people like James Nicholson and Edley Hansen and, and or uh, sorry uh, Hansen and Edley Howard and and uh, right. Aldrich Ames and all these guys. So you still have people like that. But it is a little bit easier, I think, to target people who are living under the thumb of a of a regime because um, you can point out the obvious, you know, to some degree. But typically, ideology and you know, and there's been a lot written about all of this and and the techniques for recruitment. So I'm not again, this is not sources and methods, but um, you know, typically ideology is not the the driver, right? It's something else. It's something more personal. It's maybe it's something as base as money. Maybe it's they don't feel like they got enough hugs, right? A lot of times they feel disrespected, right? And you're saying ideology is not the number one motivator. Yeah, of, typically of, of, to not become an asset. You're yeah, saying? you found you, you when you when you think about the 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 biggest cats. I mean, and, and that's although that's you know some of the, the the best Russian sources we've had over the years. Again, not nothing new. This stuff stuff's been out there. Is uh, you know they have been based on ideology, but for the most part, it's something else. Their kid is sick and they need access to to healthcare or something, whatever it may be. And it could be very pedestrian as a reason, but you have to look for those things. And and again, I guess the point being, going back to the original point is is the, the technology helps to speed things along sometimes. Mm -hmm. But underlying that, you know, you still, you need somebody, you can collect all the information, you know, remotely and through intercepts that you, you want, but you need somebody standing in that tent who can then tell you what everybody looked like when they made this decision, right? Or what were they actually thinking? Yeah, because, Mike, I was, in the, I was yeah. in the United States Air Force at a nuclear missile base. What was my first, uh, my first assignment? And to get my clearance, I'll never forget, I go home, uh, and I'm at the mall in my town, and my fifth grade, mind you, I'm 19 at this point, my fifth grade math teacher, Mr. Bonaparte, he, big, buff, he was a football player, black guy, he was like, oh, Shauna. I'm like, hey, Mr. Bonaparte, we have a moment. He's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, the, somebody in the government called me. I'm not even joking. And they asked me if I thought that you, as a child, would grow up to do anything to, like, sabotage or do something against the country and i'm like what he's like yeah he's like good luck whatever the hell you're doing he's like, <laughs> he's yeah. like get i'm not i can't make this up and i was like whoa that's just part of the vetting process that's, for the air well, force that's, that's, that's normal, normal though so yeah it's normal, normal. but, but, but mike yeah. going to my point you're talking about technology yeah. so like when you have like it, it's easier I, I i'm guessing for their like digital profile like a mark zuckerberg with facebook that must have been the CIA and the government's just like, oh, my God, people have been fighting to keep this information. Now you're just giving it because it's cool yeah. to do. That helps. Yeah. Right? Well, it does. Oh, I mean, look, you know, I run a company that, that, you know, private sector business that does intelligence and investigations and due diligence. And the amount of information that's available out there on the average citizen, not, not just here in the U.S., but around the world for the most part, uh, is astonishing compared to 20 years ago, you know, 30 years ago for, for sure. But uh, – it's, it, you know, it's again, it's that uniquely American mindset, which is it's the government I got to worry about. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the private business or the private sector that's been hoovering up all this information that you've been gleefully, happily giving them. Let me tell you I, something, Mike. Yeah. A generation ago, you could literally have a family in the next town over and your family would not know. <laughs> OK, <laughs> now. If you look at another girl's story on Instagram, yeah. your sleuth CIA <laughs> girlfriend will find you in less than 24 hours. Are you That's the sign of the times. Sounds like I, you're speaking from experience. I'm 100% yeah, not <laughs> speaking from experience. I love you, baby. Yeah. No, but it's it, it's so true that, that technology has sped up everything in our lives for good and for bad. Yeah. And, and Mike, just really fast, not to go up. So a lot of people get uh, confused when it comes to agent, CIA agent, which you were, to assets. And my question is, when it comes to like an asset, is there an expiration date on that person? Like, let's say you use them on a mission. Are they just on standby for future or is it kind of like, no, good luck, goodbye? Yeah, it, terminology always, always, always uh, trips people up. You're right. Um, it's not so much agent. Um, you know, it's officer. Got you. Don't know why. Got you. Um, asset, you're right, is the the... the 
the target, gotcha. the individual. Uh, agent is typically law enforcement gotcha. uh, for the most part. Uh, and there is a difference. Yeah, There's a difference between law enforcement recruitment of, of assets or sources yep. and intel community, right? And this is kind of goes across the board. It's not just, I don't think it's, from my experience, it's not just in the U.S., is that you know, you tend to, from an intel perspective, you tend to look at assets for long term gotcha. right? because you never know where they're going to end up, right? Mm -hmm. Law enforcement, for good reason, sometimes it's a, you know, it's a project specific or a case specific, you know, recruitment or development of a source. And then, boom, you're gone, right? Mm -hmm. or, you, or, you, or you need to burn the source because you're moving towards, you know, the courts. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. there's a, there is a big difference there. Um, but, you know, human nature being what it is, I don't know that motivations have changed that much, right? I think attention spans have shortened, yeah. but I don't think motivations have changed that much for, for people. Uh, Mike, are you following this Restrict Act? Mm. Have you heard the story about what the Restrict Act, Act is? Boy, you know, I'd like to say I have been because that would make me sound smarter. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have a clue what yeah. you're talking about. Okay, so this is this is something that a lot That's of exactly people... what a CIA agent would say. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, been right, studying Adam. Restrict Act for months. Oh, fine. You've just All been right. outed, Mike. Well, and so is your family <laughs> next uh, town over. Yeah. <laughs> you heard about yeah. that? Yeah. Mom, yeah. yeah. So the Restrict, so it's Restrict Act. It's kind of like the Patriot Rob, Act. Rob, go down. It's a new Patriot Act. It's the new no, Patriot up, Act. Let me read the top, Rob, if you can just okay. write the Restrict yeah. Act establishes a risk-based process tailored to rapidly changing technology and threat environment by directing the Department of Commerce to identify and mitigate foreign threats to information and communications technology products and services. Now, the key word there says foreign threats. Very soon, they're going to add an additional word called domestic threats. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. where you're in uh, uh, America, you're creating content on YouTube. According to Restrict Act, we got to shut you down because your content is this. You're doing what you're doing on, you know, Instagram or TikTok or Twitter. So, you, you know, we talked about this with Giuliani to see what his thoughts were. Because mm -hmm. for me, I asked him a question. I said, as much as the RICO Act did good and you were able to catch all the bad guys, that kind of also set the tone for us to come up with the Patriot Act and the next act and the next act, which means more and more and more yeah. of Big Brother or somebody, you know, watching over what we're doing. Why should this be something people should be concerned about? Well, because, look, with the exception, I mean, realizing where I came from, but so there is, a, I think, a, a need for uh, secrecy on certain things, sources and methods, and there's a reason why there's a need to know to some degree, but there's also a very important reason why you need as much transparency in government as possible, right? Um, and so I, part of that is how curious are the people that you send to Washington to represent you? Are they asking the right questions? You know, are they, or is it basically just a self-interested frat party? Uh, or actually, I, well, that's sexist of me to say that, isn't it? Um, but they would have Bud Light, though. That's they, would have, they would have Bud Light. Exactly. It's going to be all right. <laughs> that joke is never going to fail. Never going to get always, old. It's always, always good. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think that there's... You know, half the time, look, there's a there is as it, I, again, I'll speak to what I know, which is the uh, the agency. There's a well-worn path between uh, agency headquarters and uh, Capitol Hill in Washington D.C. of briefers going back and forth and back and forth and talking to the, the Senate Intel Committees and, and 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 congressional Intel Committees and and explaining to them what's going on. And then there's this game that gets played in Washington where when something breaks and it looks like, you know, the, the, the intel community was engaged in something that people didn't know about or oversight didn't know about, it's horse shit. Of course they knew about it, right? They, but there's a game that gets played where they can go out in front of the cameras and express angst and, and anger over, oh, I can't believe this is going on. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to start an investigation. And of course, no investigation ever results in anything in Washington, D.C. But it's an important point, which is you need to have that communication. You need to have uh, your intel community, your law enforcement, on the, particularly on a federal level, talking to your representatives and them asking questions and trying to ensure that, mm -hmm. you know, there is, to the degree that it's a possible, transparency. Yeah. I want to transition to Pentagon stories. The only reason I'm asking is I thought you would know more about the Restrict Act because th this, this is a, for a lot of content creators... Amongst content creators, a lot of people are talking about this mm. because, you know, it, 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 when, when you get to move the goalpost and you can kind of create guidelines to target whoever you want during any season just because something was according to allegedly and all these guys nowadays that are getting allegedly and their lives are being ruined 
by allegedly instead of actually being convicted or charged. It's a very weird, fickle time we're living in. So some people are sitting there saying, listen, man, all these new acts are coming up. We saw what happened last time you came up with this, and it backfired on a lot of different people. Mm. Here's a guy, Giuliani, who his license has been suspended. He's, he, he doesn't have a way of making money right now as a lawyer. Just because allegedly he was part of something, he hasn't lost it yet. He's not been disbarred, but his license is not there for him to practice. Yeah. It, it's, it's important to just protect those people who are doing podcasts and shows and they're giving their opinions and they're giving their thoughts versus saying, this is one of the reasons why I love what Rumble is doing. Mm. We're not a, uh, 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 we don't, I don't even know if we put our shows on Rumble regularly or not. We're not one that promotes Rumble or any of that. But the reason why I love what Musk did, I love what Spotify did, I love what Rumble did. What Musk did with Twitter scared the crap out of everybody because they were always united together with Jack Dorsey and all of them. Mm -hmm. The moment they lost Twitter with Musk, they all had to check themselves. Yeah. The moment Musk brought Twitter back on, Facebook and all those guys brought Trump back on, right? So Spotify, the moment Spotify didn't silence uh, Joe Rogan, they realized, oh, shit. There's another place they can go take their podcast with. Right. So we could take a loss, even though all those guys start saying, I'm going to take my songs off. I'm never going to sell here. Okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Spotify said, yeah, we don't care. We're going to be fine. Yeah, Joe Baez. Oh, my God, Joe Baez is leaving Spotify. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the hell am I going to listen and to? And yeah. even, even Rumble. Yeah. You know what yeah. Rumble is doing right now? Rumble is kind of getting YouTube to realize there's a second option. So if you choose to really constantly do this, mm. you know, the Patriot that concern becomes if they target the guys – that are on those platforms. How can we now control people on Twitter, even though it's owned by Elon Musk? How can we control people on uh, uh, Rumble? This is one of the reasons why some people are concerned about Res Restrict Act. Quick point. Uh, don't feel bad because this is very new. I think it came out mm. less than a month ago when the TikTok CEO testified in front of Congress. Mm. And essentially the concern with this Restrict Act is, is that they're using you know, banning TikTok as a Trojan horse to say, we got to, you know, yep. we got to get this out of here, but then it's going to be a slippery slope to like, next thing you know, Instagram's banned or YouTube is banned. And it, it, it's just more government control. And, you know, our friend Reagan once said the most terrifying words that you ever hear is I'm from the government and I'm here <laughs> to help. To help. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest concern about this. And then I, I know we're going to switch gears here, but also speaking of government control, the whole central bank digital currencies, the CBDCs things, that's another concern to coincide with this restrict that. Yeah. Rob, can I read this? Can, can you zoom in a little bit more to read this? I mean, you're going to have to work with me here because I can't. So, so yeah, so as I'm going right, you got to go do that with me. Okay, uh, so this is what restricting the emergence of security reserves of information communications technology act or to restrict that. Okay, fine. Let's see what it says. So this was March 7th, a month ago. This bill requires federal actions to identify and mitigate. We just read this. Foreign Threats to Information Communication Technology, ICT. Products and services. Penalties for violations under the bill. I wonder what that is. Specifically, the Department of Commerce must identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, investigate, Jeez. and mitigate transactions involving ICT. Products and services in which any foreign adversary, such as China... Okay, they're starting it off with China, but that'll change in a minute. Has any interest in that pose an undue or unacceptable risk to the U.S. national security or safety of U.S. persons? Additionally, commerce must identify and per, uh, refer to the president and any covered holdings that poses an undue or ac unacceptable risk to U.S. national security or the security of safety of U.S. Uh, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Persons, if the president determines that the holding possesses such a risk the president may compel uh, divestment okay so this specifically sounds like it is a tiktok type of a thing they're targeting right it doesn't sound like it's a u.s company they're targeting but everything starts off like second amendment a lot of guys that are worried about any kind of slight regulation because then they're going to say oh now we got this oh now let's get this oh now let's mm -hmm. get that oh now let's pad it oh now let's amend this oh now let's amend that so, anyways, it starts like this, and it gets a little bit more into your business. Well, I think it's, I mean, you know, look, it's 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 sort of a sidebar to Cepheus and some of the other, you know, uh, regulations that are out there about, you know, what companies can come into the U.S. and, and purchase. Um, so, I, 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 there's a, but you're right in the sense that the government does tend to throw a big net out there on any issue, on any concern, right, and then with the assumption that, well, at some point, maybe we'll tidy it up and we'll, we'll restrict the parameters. We'll get it a little bit more specific. But right now, we're going to throw that net out there and see what happens. So I think there's – so you're right to, to be concerned about the sliding 
uh, nature of U.S. government actions, and which is again why uh, you know transparency is is you know probably the best way mm-hmm. because once you get this information out there, once people understand, and nobody you know, <laughs> I'm a good case in point. To your point, I don't feel bad not knowing about it if it's a month old. Honestly, if it was a year old, I probably still wouldn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. Well, I thought as a big TikToker yourself, oh, you yeah. would God. for sure Either know way. all this stuff. But I am one, doing dance all the point, time. You, you know, the whole foreign adversaries yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. So you brought up Rumble. Well, Rumble, we know, was, I think, formed in Canada. Yeah. So that should be a concern because where do they label foreign well, they, they adversaries? moved their headquarters what? to Sarasota, though. I think he's in Sarasota now, which is a good but movie. But it's a Toronto-based company. I know it is. Say. It still is. So it's so, again, yeah. I, I, to me, <laughs> Rumble is necessary for the marketplace. Okay, Spotify is necessary for the marketplace. Okay, Twitter is necessary for the marketplace because it minimizes bullying. You can't bully when there's alternative options. Bud Light doing what they did. There's no other. There's so many different other beer companies that the market's like, yeah, you know what? No problem. Let's find out. Maybe you're right. Mm-hmm. It may be the transgender. If it takes your stock to the next level, sales goes up 60 percent. We'll sit there and say, yeah. salute, good for you. I don't know where you found the market, but congratulations. But if the market drops 30 percent like it did last week, and they're going to Coors, now watch if Coors says, well, we also have to follow our ESG score, and Coors does something stupid like this, and they go grab somebody else, then they're also following the camp. Someone has to come out. Who was the guy that did the commercial? Was it Jeep? There's a commercial like 10 years ago or five years ago where the commercial was about, here's why America's great. And it was a voice like that. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why America's great because we build things. We're builders. Yeah. And you're listening yeah, okay. to this. You're like, I'm I am a builder. <laughs> this is what we do. And you're like, damn, I love Jeep. Yeah. You know, man, it relates, talks to me. I, don't, yeah. I think it was yeah. something, a commercial that was, was so. I just hit a guy, but I keep going. Yeah, it was a <laughs> very, <laughs> very much yeah. of a pro-America. Yeah. I, there, I, was a, there was a great Barbasol. Remember, the, there's that shaving cream, Barbasol, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, there was a great Barbasol commercial. Um, uh, it was like a World War II setting. Right, and the the, the guy was uh, you know talking to like as if he was your you know, granddad or great granddad, and he was he was in a in a foxhole or something. It was I, I don't remember. I I'm sure Rob could find it. Uh-huh. Um, by the way, he's like the hardest working son of a bitch. He's like the disc jockey over there. Rob, just like, Rob yeah. is like a yeah. it's like a yeah. playing all the big strip hit. club. Yeah. He's the best. He oh, does. there there it is, the top thing. That's what well, Barbara saw. Like a man. Can we play it though? I don't know if we oh, can play it. Don't, don't play it. I can play it. You know how YouTube well, works if you can do Can we see it? It's about what? It's about. Oh, he's like in war. And <laughs> that looks like the Saving Private Ryan scene. But but you, but you know what? That's exactly what. That's a great I, commercial. Well, that's, that. By the way, you saw this this uh, Super Bowl. There was a uh, uh, commercial about Jesus. Did, did, mm-hmm. you, did, did you see? What was the hashtag that they use? Um, what was the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, really? Uh, Oh, you didn't catch that? I didn't like, catch that. I, I missed the him. Jesus Mass. commercial. Yeah. I didn't see it. Oh, he gets us. He gets us. He gets us oh. was the hashtag. So everybody's like, what is this guy talking about? He gets us. Who is he gets us? Who is he gets us? Anyways, it was an ad. He gets us a campaign to promote Jesus and Christianity, is running two ads during the game as part of a staggering $100 million wow. media investment. Wow. So what's cool about this is, guess what? Now let's see the other side. Okay, let's see the other side. That Someone has got to target somebody who... You know, as a regular family guy watching football, you know, likes to compete, likes to watch UFC, drinks, all this stuff. Hey, give us a commercial there. See what happens, right? Yeah. Can we relate to something like that? It's going to be interesting if they allow competition to happen. Let's go into the leaked yeah. Pentagon uh, secret documents lift and uh, the lid on U.S. spying on Russia's war in Ukraine. This is an NBC News story. And then I'll give the WSJ story as well. So dozens of leaked defense, uh, defense department classified Documents have been posted online revealing U.S. spying on Russia's war machine in Ukraine and secret assessment of Ukraine's combat power as well as intelligence gathering in America's allies, including South Korea and Israel. Highlights from the documents include the fact that Russia's private mercenary outfit, the uh, Wagner Group, has sought to purchase weapons from NATO's member Turkey and that the group is considering recruiting more convicts for the war in Ukraine. Additionally, a document marked secret examines while Ukrainian bombs equipped with the U.S. made guidance systems known as Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or JDAMs, have failed recently. South Korea has concerns about providing artillery 
shells to the U.S. to replenish America's supplies as officials worried about the ammunition would end up in Ukraine's military. The document marks secret assets pathways for Israel to provide lethal aid to Ukraine, providing hypothetical situations that might drive Israel from its balancing act between Kiev and Moscow. The leadership of Israel's Mossad Foreign Intelligence Service encourages staff to take part in anti-government protests that have swept Israel According to one document, what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on the story? Well, first of all, anything marked secret, it's basically got the classification level of anything that's on TikTok, right? So, yeah. because it, to, to what we were talking about before, the government casting a wide net, there's a lot of overclassification that goes on, right? And but secret is your your lowest level of classification, and you look at this and you think again. Because you gotta, it's like an investigation, right? You 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 don't build your investigation on on a theory, right? You base it on evidence, on facts, right? Otherwise, you, you're by the time you get done, it's just on shaky ground. So, when you're doing something like this, and it's a counterintelligence issue, and you're trying to figure out, you know, is, is this a, a, a genuine leak? Uh, if so, that's a fairly simple process. You figure out who had access to the information. In today's world, a lot of people have access, right? We came out of 9-11, and one of the things they talked about was, you know, there wasn't enough sharing of intelligence. So guess what? We overshare. And so, in part, that's a problem. But you look at this and you think, okay, what are they talking about here? You know, some of the documents talked about uh, Russia. Oh, we're going to start a a propaganda campaign in Africa. No shit, Sherlock. Of course they are, (laughs) right? Uh, Or... They're talking about the, the JDAMs not being, you know, as effective. Well, who does that benefit when you talk about this? So you start looking at the information that's in these documents, and you have to keep a, an element of this is uh, on one side you have to think, okay, is there a chance that this is a, you know, covert action campaign by the Russians to put this information out there? Because a lot of it does, you know, hey, look, if, if we put an article in there or a, a document in there about uh, the South Koreans being a little bit uh, iffy on providing shells, if we talk about Egypt's going to sell Russia, you know, weapons, if we talk about the UAE coming together with a, an agreement with it, all that shit, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, there's not a, a possibility here that it is a, a disinformation campaign. If it's not, if they're authentic documents, and quite frankly, the government already knows that, right? You know, they're just not telling us. You know, when John Kirby stands up there and goes, well, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know yeah. whether these are authentic or not. Of course, bullshit. Of course you do. Yeah. You, you know, you, you know exactly where these things, you know, came from. How, who, what office originated them, mm-hmm. right? Who wrote them? You know, you've got, you've got all this material stored securely, <laughs> or at least you did, yeah. if it's authentic. And now how, you, how much of this, how much of this, Mike, yeah. is, like, if you know where it came from, but if you tell everybody where it came from, yeah. you're publicly humiliated, so you have to act like... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, I don't know if that makes sense or not. It's kind well, of like no, saving does. space. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, because look, this is anytime you have a, a leak of intelligence, it's it's embarrassing, right? I mean, it, it, because it, it it's embarrassing and, and and operationally damaging on on several different fronts, right? Our allies, you know, if this is authentic and these 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 documents are, and and if they are authentic, then we've already told our allies, right? Mm-hmm. So when we talk about well, we have this discussion. You know, with with our allies over the weekend. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, this is this is playing out after the fact. So, if they are in fact authentic, our allies already know that they're authentic, and so they're already <laughs> looking at you know what potential damage occurred from this. But you're right. Anytime this happens, it's it's embarrassing, right? And yet, and yet, you're never going to get the potential for this sort of thing to happen down to zero. Right. It's ne- you're never going to completely re- eliminate the risk of an intelligence leak. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading all the stories by different papers to see what they're saying. New York Times, uh, clues left online might aid seek investigation, officials say. The Guardian, U.S. intelligence leak. What do we know about the top secret documents? Moscow Times, five things the leaked Pentagon documents reveal about Russia's army. CNN, leaked Pentagon documents lingered on social media despite uh, our urgent national security concerns. CBS News, Pentagon documents leak Biden. Everybody is pretty much saying the same thing, yeah. okay? Yeah. So if everybody is generally saying the same thing, it kind of minimizes a bit of gamesmanship, right? Or to, to you, you kind of maybe sitting there saying, well, it's Fox, CNN, all these guys that don't agree with each other, they're all playing the you know safe game of saying, we don't know yet what it is, but who right. could it be? Yeah. It could be these guys. Yeah. It could be those guys. 
And the allegations, everyone makes their own allegations, but nobody knows where it's really coming yeah. from. You've got it's like it's like every decision tree, right? No matter what you're talking about, there's not that many branches on it. These are either authentic or they're not. And yeah. if they're not, it's a disinformation campaign. So who the hell would have done it? Well, you know, that's another decision. You know, our, it would probably be the Russians. But you have to make that you know that uh, that decision very quickly in a counterintelligence investigation. And my point being is that they already know. Of course. Right? So they're just you know they're not telling us. I got a question for you, Mike. Yeah. So apparently, this these documents were sitting on Discord for like a month. And then it ended up somehow in a Minecraft computer game. That's something out of like <laughs> fantasy land. Yeah. But when I hear of leaks and this type of stuff, automatically I go to, you know, Edward Snowden, WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. You know, this person right here, they don't know who it is, if it is a person or if it's some sort of agency disinformation campaign. Mm -hmm. Is this leaker, uh, is he going to be considered a traitor? Is there going to be some sort of whistleblower hero type thing that gets uh, attached to him? Yeah. What, what, what's your opinion on it'll, that? It'll be all over the spectrum, right? I mean, there are people that consider you know, Snowden a hero, right? And I understand what, where they're coming from. There are other people that consider him a traitor, right? And I get that. You know? But uh, with, with this, look, it's not the first time that um, classified documents, either ours or from our allies, have ended up in... Uh, as bizarre as it sounds, in sort of the gaming community. Yeah. Right? And maybe there's, I don't know, maybe there's some connection that we can figure out between uh, people who spend a lot of time in, in, in the gaming world and, you know, individuals who have access to classified... Computer I, hackers and I, I, yeah. in front of screens all day. Yeah. I, I, yeah. IT. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, it's, again, you can't, because of the need to share information... Right? And there is a legitimate need to do that. You just have to be careful about how you do it. You don't want to, you know, again, you don't want to make such a large playing field that you have no control over what the hell you're doing. But because of that and because it's just a human endeavor, you're always going to have the potential for a problem like this. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have consequences for it, mm -hmm. then you're, you're increasing the likelihood that it could happen again. You're not minimizing the likelihood. And the problem we've always had with, with this sort of thing is there's, you know, the, it's a shifting landscape in terms of from one administration to the next, how they deal with this sort of thing. It's, not, it's certainly not the first time. It won't be the last time. But if you don't have consequences for people who, uh, who act out against agreements that they've already signed, Right. You yeah. got to take that very seriously. You sign agreements, right? You, yeah, I was we all, gonna, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and that goes to your grave, right? You don't, you know, it's not like you think, well, I stopped working or I'm not getting enough hugs at work or, oh, boy, I don't agree with that policy. So fuck my secrecy agreements. Yeah. You know, that's where you have to, you know, you have to have consequences. Yeah. Mike, I was just going to ask you, I was just going to ask you that because Mike is uh, not to cut you off, Adam, because like our at the base that I was at and now it's from Air Force Base where the funny the, that's where the chinese spy balloon was hovering at uh, over that of oh, my base it was the but, biggest but you, you didn't have anything to do with that no 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 i, just, okay. I think uh, I allegedly allegedly yeah. but uh the biggest threat wasn't like a nuclear attack it was the insider threat yeah. our insider threat was the number one threat as people knowing about the information but i agree with you 100 you signed the you signed you're, you're supposed to stay quiet then all of a sudden you're leaking shit so so mike are you saying that you probably not probably but is it almost like a definite they know who the hell did it whoever leaked it I, I think so. I mean, just given, um, you know, when you look at, at, at forensic capabilities now, um, you know, nothing, nothing is completely deleted. Um, and, and particularly when you're talking about the power of the, the government, to, you know, to pursue an investigation. Now, whether they're organized enough to actually do it, I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that they'll, they'll sort this one out. I don't think that uh, we're not talking about Lex Luthor here. And I think they'll also <laughs> sort out, and they already have, if this is disinformation. So if these documents are not accurate, I think they will they would come out relatively quickly and say that. But if there is an investigation into individuals who have been responsible for this and they're authentic, it'll probably take a little bit longer for gotcha. them to talk. The, the, my, my, my last question on this is, um, you know, I feel like all countries spy, government spy, and, and this is you know, talking about, yeah. you know, whether it's yeah. the you know, CIA, it's MI6, whether it's the Mossad, whether it's the what, GRU in Russia, KGB, um, India, Pakistan, France, they, they all, every country spies. And I don't think it's that concerning that we're spying on Russia. I think that's kind of goes with the, with the story. I mean, <laughs> you would hope we are. Yeah, you hope yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't even think it's that big of a concern. We're, we're spying on 
Ukraine and Zelensky. It's like, buddy, if we're giving you a fucking couple billion dollars, just believe we're kind of checking in on you. Yeah. But how big of a concern is that that they're finding out that we're spying on South Korea, our ally, mm -hmm. Israel, our biggest ally in the Middle East, Mossad? How much validity is it there, and how big of a concern is that? Well, look, <laughs> I know this will come as a shock, but I, I, Mossad pays attention to what their allies are doing right mm -hmm, so sure. Mossad has an, an, an effort to understand what we're doing right does that mean they're collecting intelligence on us uh yeah and does that mean the South Koreans to the degree that they have the resources and, and abilities are they doing the same thing yes on their allies of, of, of course it is um yeah it's understood right now there are limits to that right but uh even with our closest allies there's an understanding that you Trust but verify, right? I mean, because every nation acts in its own best interests, right? Now, you know, your, your, your efforts are obviously far more aggressive when we're talking about nation states that are not aligned with us, right? So no surprise. But we better hope. People always say that. They say, well, we're doing the same damn thing, right? We're doing mm -hmm. this. And, well, yeah, you better hope we are <laughs> because, it's, you know, as much as you may want to, this is not a, a world where we're a community of nations, right? And we're all looking out for each other, right? And then, you know, unicorns are all flying out of our asses and we're all happy. And, and it's just not, it's not the way it works. Let me, let me ask this question. Do you think, uh, do you think uh, uh, Putin or Xi feel like they can get things done negotiating with Biden? Do you think Xi and Russia think they can succeed in negotiations with Biden more than they would with Trump, more than they would with Obama, or somebody new like a DeSantis? I think what they feel with Biden is that it's it's a known quantity, right? And I think that's I don't know whether they feel that would be speculation on my part, you know, what you know, how do they rate them in, in regards to who they can negotiate with better, but I do think that they feel as if Trump is is more of an unknown quantity, uh, and they can't really you know, look and come up with like a three to five year plan of what. So Trump's then, wouldn't do. you want to yeah. keep a, a Biden in office? If, if you know, if you know yeah. that guy is an unknown quantity because he's not predictable, if that is what you assess it assess it to be, you almost want to keep this guy in office for another six years, don't you? Well, based on look, if if, if all you're looking at is sort of a decision between Biden and Trump, and you look at Trump's time in office and you look at Biden's time in office, if I'm a, you know, a, a head of a nation that's uh, at odds with the U.S., I would prefer Biden because I can, I can more accurately predict, I think, in my opinion, where he's going to go, what his policies are going to be, how he's going to behave, right? And so, yes, I mean, I think there's, you, could, you could make that argument. Uh, Trump was unpredictable, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons why he lost the election. People were tired of the chaos, right? And, but... I think with, I mean, Biden's been in D.C. for what, 50, 50 plus years, yeah. right? You know, you know, you know for, me, for me, I wonder, because anytime a company has a CEO that didn't want to communicate or I couldn't even get a sit down with them, I, I, didn't, I didn't like that, mm. which means I couldn't get things done. <laughs> I, I, I would much prefer an asshole that was willing to sit with me <laughs> I, than somebody... Mm -hmm. That was the nicest guy, but never yeah. called back, never email, and never had time to come and sit down and visit. It's as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Because, you know, at least the asshole, you know, you know, what his agenda was. It's his company right. against yours. It's his protection. But the other guy would, you know, was so, like, aloof, and you had to be very careful with the guys that were very aloof, okay? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they sit there and they say, you know, because let's put the blame on Russia. Let's say Russia's behind this thing. Because if Russia's using Israel and South Korea, it's a form of dividing and conquering. You're pinning Israel against U.S. And so it's very strategic and brilliant if that's really what you're doing. And to be so good, you also threw some of your internal stuff of Russia to make sure people don't think you're the one that's doing it. Which, if you look at it, is absolutely minimal. Right. right. I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not a big deal on, on their own. There. Right. But, oh, my God. But they give a little bit. About, yeah. They, yeah. But that's, it's, it's again, it's, it's. No question about it. Yeah, but but yeah, it is very. Yeah. If Let's just say if it is Russia. Right. Then 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 if they're doing that to pin Biden against uh, 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 Israel and South Korea. And then maybe they're saying, you know what, this Trump guy, at least, you know, when he was there, 
NATO was not bothering us. He was not a fan of NATO. We're not a fan of NATO. You know, yes, the trade issues was, it is what it is, and we had to deal with that. Huawei, we had to deal with that. You know, I could never attack Ukraine under him. So do I really want this guy back? I can attack Ukraine under Biden, but at the same time, if Trump was here and if I attacked Ukraine under Biden, would they have sent $140 billion to Ukraine to help? Would Trump have sent money? I don't know if Trump would have sent money, but maybe Trump would have had a meeting with me within 24 hours to say, if you don't stop doing this, then... Yeah. So I, I, because to these guys, the way I'm processing it, who do you want at the helm? Mm -hmm. Do you want the guy that you can have a kneecap to kneecap conversation and negotiate? Or do you want the guy that is, you know, having worried about the ice cream he's going to have and you don't really know if you can have a real conversation? That, that's yeah. my biggest thing. Who do you yeah. want as an enemy? Sometimes I want the leader of the enemy to be somebody I can talk to no matter how much I may not like the guy and how much we disagree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a, a, a odd thing here in the U.S. I think maybe it's elsewhere, but this idea that you have to like the person in charge, right? I don't, I don't, you know, I didn't like Trump. I don't like Trump necessarily. I think he's just too chaotic, and I think he's, you know, he's all over the map. I liked the policies, right? I liked the policies better. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to like the person necessarily. I'm more interested in what are they doing, you know, as as <laughs> as a, a leader. So, but with yeah, you know, Putin, I I'm sure. You know, Putin looked at, at Biden and he remembered it was Obama Biden when they, you know, walked into Crimea and there was no response. Right. They took Crimea and, and during that administration and, you know, there was no pushback really to speak of. And so they probably factor that into their calculation over Ukraine. I, I'm sure Putin was surprised at the at the monetary response, sort of the, the way the allies came together and said, because I, I, I figure their calculation was probably different. They probably thought the U.S. will not get quite so involved. They will not make quite the effort with NATO. But uh, I, I, you know, to that degree, his intelligence was, was clearly off. But uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at this, and I, certainly if I'm G, if I'm G, and I think that I'm close to the top of the, of the, of the ladder here, uh, I would much rather have somebody like President Biden in place because, again, I can look at him and I think I can I can map out and predict it, based on 50 case, plus years where he's going. If that's the case, I won't do this because mm. this hurts. Mm. That's the only thing. Mm. So if I'm sitting here thinking about you're doing this, I wouldn't do this because you're hurting the existing guy because you're giving more ammunition to the opposing side. I, I would I would let it fl or roll rather than doing this to say, hey, because do you remember when Trump had to keep firing people in CNN, uh, CNN and MSNBC would constantly say, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a source within Trump administration. Yeah. What a terrible yeah. thing to yeah. do to a guy to confuse the crap out of him. Like think about when they say, there's a player within the New England Patriots organizations that's leaking information to us at ESPN that there's a major fight and a fall on between Tom Brady and Bill. Like those types of things and you're Brady and Bill you're like, hey, Who's guys, talking? stop it. Yeah. We're good. We don't have any. But then in the back of your mind, you're like, Who's talking is shit? it that guy that I benched? Is yeah. it that guy that I didn't let do this? Yeah. Is it that guy that I didn't invite to the party? Is it that guy that wants to be traded? What is it? Regardless of how much bulletproof, strong, mentally tough you are, they get a little bit of your brain and you start thinking. So regardless, yeah. no matter how bulletproof this administration may be, they're going to say, who at the Pentagon? wants Republican Trump to be there. That's not on our side. We gotta fire this person. Who is that person? Is a general this? Is a general is it this person? Is that person? Mm -hmm. This 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 really throws a wrench in the game. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's all I'm saying. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean I, I again it's it's speculation at this point, obviously, you know, to say that, you know, it, it could it be uh, a uh, covert action campaign by the Russians. But I'm saying that when you do something like this, when you're yeah. investigating something like this, you have to keep all the options on the table until you prove otherwise. And you know that's it's and again I, I would argue that they they already know if they don't already know what's going on with this then that is really disappointing. Yeah, if if, so. you, if you're doing it at the KGB yeah. level of Putin, yeah. trust me, Putin's got like a board of I would assume he's got a board of everybody who to poke to piss off with who and create a proxy here to unify here, so we can become the good guy and call these guys and do a favor for that guy so he can connect us with this guy and get in front of, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming that's how these rooms, these conversations are going to be had. So yeah, yeah. when it's election time, you got eight more months left, nine more months left before we decide who the Republican candidate is going to be. So DeSantis, Trump, you know, who do you want to be the head? Uh, if you are really meddling in elections, 
I would be really more thought out of who I'd want to eliminate to create the enemy against. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let me yeah. just, I want to ask one I wanna question. I want to go into the nether story. You make yeah. your point and I'm going to go into I want to go full <laughs> conspiracy mode right now oh, just here for we a go. second. Go, Adam. Yeah, In the last month. <laughs> go, Adam. I'm going into Vinny territory let's right go. now. Let's go. Let's go. Last month, the Chinese spy balloons. A couple weeks after that, Putin uh, hosts Xi in Moscow. Mm. Those two are having conversations. Putin's having a love affair with Xi, waving by like Bye. a schoolgirl. Love you. <laughs> what kind of conversations do you think those two guys are having behind closed doors about America? How are we going to make America weak? We're going to you know, they're they're he, they're yeah. they're completely together at this point. Any everything that's happening in Ukraine has basically, you know, thrown Putin right into Xi's arms. He basically said he was kind of jealous of the success China has had over the last few decades and wishes that type of success for Russia. What kind of conversations are happening behind closed doors and how much plotting against America is uh, in those conversations? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, the dynamic there is definitely that, that China's in the driver's seat. You know, Putin's in sort of the supplicant position here. Um, and, and that relationship... Uh, only goes so far, even though they said there's no limits to our friendship. Well, bullshit. Of course they are. You know, as soon as Xi decides it's not in their best interests, you know, to to push this dynamic. But you know, Xi's working to try to position China as uh, the peacemaker around the globe, right? He's trying to increase sort of his diplomatic standing, as it were, I guess. And and at the same time, he's you know he's rattling his saber over there at Taiwan. That's a delicate balance between those two things. Uh, but with yeah, I mean, Putin absolutely needs China on side. Mm -hmm. He's got almost nothing else, right? I mean, the Iranians are selling them drones, and, you know, he's, you know, in Belarus. God, I got Belarus on my side. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, you know, what's China gaining? They're gaining cheap energy, yep. right? They're watching as both Russia and America, you know, uh, empty their warehouses of military hardware. Yep. So there's a lot, you know, to, to be gained from China's perspective in all of this. And Russia is in a position where it needs to, you know, it needs to kind of do this. I right. And speaking of perspective, by the way, you know, you just brought up the Taiwan thing. So it's the same. It's very similar. It's analogous to exactly what's happening. So Russia invades Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What was the response from America? What was the response from the rest of the world? The response from the EU? OK, now China invades Taiwan. What's the response going to be? We've yeah. seen this play out almost like war games. <clears throat> Those types of conversations must be taking place. Mike, as well. Mike do you yeah. think any of this? Be um, and I want to be completely honest. I know you said Trump chaotic, and I I understand where the chaos came from because as he came in, fake Russia, all that. I'd be pissed off too. If I was him, I'd I'd have a huge huge chip on my shoulder. I'd be upset with the media and everything too. Do you think all the, our economy, recession, inflation, our dollars going bye bye, militarily, where people are Af Afghanistan withdrawal and all that? Do you think that uh, the majority of this is happening under Trump? Honestly, do you think this is still the way that we are right now? No, no, I, because I think the policies would have been different. Look, I mean, you know, you, 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 COVID came along and kind of fucked things up, obviously, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But so that that was an outlier. Uh, but I, I do think that if a the economy, I mean, look, the first thing that, that that Biden did and he campaigned on it, you know, was shutting down the energy sector, right? And you know, one of the the the, the really uh, strong elements of the Trump economy was oil and gas, right? And and national security and energy independence are completely linked. You mm -hmm. can't separate the two. So. No, I think there's I think there's some significant differences that could have occurred. Do I think that Trump's going to, you know, win in 2024? I don't see how he gets to that number cuz I don't think the people who who didn't vote for him the second time around, those people who were tired of the chaos, so the people who said I I got to have enough. You know, Biden won because he wasn't Trump. He didn't win because he's a great leader. 100%. Right? He lost two times before. He simply won because he wasn't Trump. But are those people who didn't vote for Trump that time are they suddenly going to look around and go, yeah, I want some more of that Trump? Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't see how he gets to that number. You know, you, it's crazy you say that. So we're at the UFC fight this weekend in Miami, which, by the way, it broke. When Dana White came out, oh. he talked about how the last time they were in Miami, I think they did 436 at the door. This time they did 11.9 million, beating Madison Square Garden's record of 11.5 million. Okay, And he says Miami is what L.A. was 10 years ago. 
And he's selling Miami. He said, oh, we're definitely going to come back a year from now. That's the video of him talking. But, you know, anyways, we don't need to play it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that happened is while you're there, huh. suddenly the crowd starts losing their mind. You feel it. And you, you hear everybody taking out their phones and then all of a sudden eruption. It was nuts. Because this guy uh named Donald Trump walked in. <laughs> 21,000 phones were lifted. Everybody's got their cameras on, shaking hands. People are trying to spot, is that Mel Gibson that just shook his hand? <laughs> yeah. That's Mike Tyson sitting next to him. Of course, Dana White, and, you know, he always speaks yeah. very highly of him because of how Trump helped him out at the beginning. And, you know, Masvidal gives a speech. The, literally, the place is going crazy. We're right back there, by the We're way, in there. that video. And so that, yeah. the yeah. place is going absolutely bonkers, right? Masvidal then starts fighting Burns. In the middle of the fight, <laughs> camera goes on him. Trump. No one's watching the fight. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> Everybody. So, so, so the, the part becomes, now here's, here's what the, the conversation yeah. becomes. Either 100% of UFC viewers are Republicans, mm. uh, or this guy has an energy about himself when he walks in that he's able to convert and magnetic energy. I even looked at Adam for a second and Adam was in tears. Adam was Adam, <laughs> Wait, Adam, Adam, do you know what? Uh, Pat, Adam was. Can you, you know, tell the truth? Pat, you know what Adam said? By, by, you know by the way, if you want me to tell the truth, I'll tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Adam I'll, says, I'm not going to lie to you. You know how I feel about Trump. I just went from here to here. Yes. <laughs> this it was, was cool. a very <laughs> yeah. weird feeling, right? It was actually oh, wow. cool but, shit. But, but, you know, but you know what? You know, it was. It was great. But, but, but he, here, here's the part as well. The one thing about politics we had, uh, 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 is it Ari Fleischer? Ari is that yes, George Bush? Yes. Ari, uh, Ari was yes. here. Yeah. And I said, why get into the game of politics? Like, why, why get into this? Like, he says, are you kidding me? And he says, unlike sports where there's a leader's bulletin, and you know if that guy scored a touchdown or did this or did that, politics, there is no leader's bulletin. It's who can sell their argument and their ideas better. Wow. It's the greatest competition. And he sold it in a way that I bet a few thousand kids that watch it, 20-year-old guys are watching saying, I'm going to get into politics. He <laughs> sold the industry so well. Wow. So mm -hmm. Don't do it, kids. Don't so, do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the point is, none of us have a clue what the hell we're talking about mm. when it comes down to who's going to win, who's not. Yeah. You know, the reality of what happened with well, the, Biden won because they just didn't want Trump, right? You know, all yeah. those votes. Okay, fine. No problem. Well, now you got what you wanted. How happy are you now? Okay, when you have a, a what's Sarah well, but, Foster? But, is that her name? Girl name? Girl's name is Sarah Foster. Is that the actress's name? Did you hear what what happened in San Francisco with this whole uh, uh, the cash app guy? No, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Daughter, yeah, yeah. what's her daughter's name? No, because Bob. Like, Go ahead. You were going to make your point before I played this for you. Well, I was going to say, you know, you, you get what you get. I mean, look, Chicago is a perfect example of that, right? Mm -hmm. They got rid of Lori Lightfoot, and what did they bring in? Someone Marxist. harder left, yeah. right? So I don't know how how do you explain that one? You, if you can go on Twitter, Rob. If you can go on Twitter, so. Just recently, this, this lady, I want everybody to go send a tweet at this lady because apparently she just got off of Twitter. Just go to my account right there. Go right there. That's exactly the one I want you to do. So before you play the video, pause it before you play the video. Here's a lady, okay, zoom in a little bit so they can see it. Her name is Hillary Ronan. Just so you know what she does, she sits on the board. I think it's District 9. If you can go on Google and Google her who she is, Hillary Ronan. Uh, two L's, Hillary Ronan, N-E-N, Hillary Ronan, N-E-N, there you go. Hillary Ronan, zoom in so we can see who she is. And I watch, this is such an interesting thing. Hillary Ronan is an American politician attorney serving as a member of the San Francisco board. Yeah, there you go, District 9, which includes the neighborhoods of Mission District, Bernal Heights, and Portola. Okay, and if you go a little lower so we know who she is, Democratic Party, uh, you, she went to Berkeley, University of California, University of San Francisco. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Now go back to the tweet. So this lady here in 2000, and let me even send you the tweet because a lot of people haven't seen the tweet. This is a tweet she sends out. I don't know if I Love send it to you, Rob. If you have it, please show the tweet. I think I send that to you as well. It's this one right here. If you can just pull up the tweet because a lot of times you see an image of a tweet and then the person goes back and deletes it. You can't find it. Well, luckily... I found the tweet, and she's left it up. So just kind of pull it up. Great. Uh, if you send it to yourself by Hillary Ronan, the date of her tweet is, let me see what the date is. She sent this in 2020 uh, to be exact on the date, August 16th, 2020. Do you have it? I text it to you, Rob. Yeah, I, te I text it to you. You should have the text that I sent to you. Uh, I, just, I just put a thumbs up on it, Rob. 
If you can just pull that up, just put do copy paste and, and pull Pat, it she's up. Still, she's still in San Francisco. Oh, you got you got to see this thing here. You got to see yeah. this thing here. What she says, uh, uh, Rob. If you're, uh, let's see if you got it or uh, not. Because she's you, still Pat. She's still in. Dude, you have to see uh, what this uh, woman uh, says, and she's still in charge. Oh, Here's she's a still tweet. In okay. So in 2020, this is her tweet. I want to make it clear that I strongly, I believe strongly in defunding the police and reducing the number of officers on our force. <laughs> For decades, we've had an imbalance in our city's budget with hundreds of millions of dollars going to San Francisco PD to have them do work they are not qualified to do. Okay. Well, look at the date, okay. August 16, 2020. Okay. okay, bookmark that. By the way, they lowered the budget by $120 million, the mayor, during that Inter time. Okay. So now go back to the tweet and watch... Her video of what she says. Go to the video of what she says. You just had to tweet out. Here okay, play the clip. This is her? Watch this. We've been begging for more footbeats and for more <laughs> officers in the Mission oh, yeah. District. Two I've weeks been ago. begging this department to give the mission what it deserves oh, wow. in terms of wow. police presence all year long. And oh, I have been told oh. time and time and time and time again, there are He's no crying. officers Cry. Cry. that on. we can send to mission. Cry. It hurts. And I feel betrayed oh, no, Hillary. by the department. I feel betrayed by the mayor. Psst. I feel betrayed oh. by the priorities of the city. It is not this board of supervisors priorities. We want our residents safe. Her name's uh, Hillary. We her name's Hillary. Let her finish. Let her finish. Getting shot, getting assaulted, getting killed because in the mission chief, it's not theft. In the mission, people are getting shot and killed. In the mission, people are getting beat up. In the mission, people are dying. Oh, no. no shit, Sherlock. Oh, no. Go on Twitter. <laughs> go on Twitter and I look at her last tweet. Go, go, just go to her account right there and look at her last tweet. Okay, zoom in. Her last tweet, 23, a peace out Twitter. Time is precious. Yeah. We'll be using time I spend on this forum having direct productive conversations with the people of San Francisco. Mm. Good luck to you, lady. Yeah. So th this is the part where, yeah. you know, you know, as sad as it is, because a guy who created a great company that's created thousands of jobs, who moved to Miami because he didn't feel safe in the middle of the night, gets stabbed, a week after this, a week and a half after whatever, yeah. two weeks after this yeah. comment she makes, and she's the same person. So now why don't you come out and apologize about your original uh, policies? Never. Uh, about the fact that you felt about defunding the police. Now you want to talk about, I feel that they're not wanting to protect the city. Sarah Foster's an actress. Yeah, I love that you found anybody that. Who, anybody who makes it on Vanity Fair, you're like left of left. You're part of the camp. 100%. You're qualified. She slams. San Francisco for being a shithole. <laughs> Weird. So go go to the bottom to read the entire quote of what she said right there. I have no words right there at the bottom. Go a little lower. Little. I have no words. San Francisco is a complete shithole. I'm a registered Democrat and feel confident saying liberal politicians <laughs> are ruining cities. Disgusting. My heart breaks for this family. Okay, and this is the daughter of David Foster, by the way. 16-time Grammy winner, David 16 Foster. 16-time. Yeah. Oh you, my know, you know, it's crazy. I'll get, you know, you started us off with UFC and all that. Uh, funny story. So, you know, the guy freaking stole my keys. I'm running around. Yeah. Vinny and I are running around. The whole time. The whole time. We go to the uh, guest services, and the one guy in front of us at guest services, Vinny will remember this, he goes, oh, shit, what's up, man? Yeah. Where you team at BBD? What's up? Jersey. Huge fan. I'm like, what's up, buddy? He goes, I'm a cop in Jersey. Yeah. I just came down here with my girl. To have a great time, UFC. Boom. I oh, tell Pat, I said, what's up? I said, what's up? He goes, I got to tell you. You know how they say, talk about defund the police? Let me tell you something. Was he talking about New Jersey police or I New York? Jer I think he's talking about Jersey. He, he, said, about Jersey. he said, before COVID, he said they would get between 80,000 and 100,000 applicants to join the police force. He goes, you know what it is now? In a year, 1,500. Yep. Did he not yep. say those numbers? Yes, he did. This is he his did. story. I said, what? I go, that... It's the same it's story. Beyond in New York City. ridiculous yeah. increase, a uh, decrease. Yeah. And I said, so how are you going to find uh, police officers now? He goes, we're just going to have to lower standards. No, you just got to move to uh, to yeah. Florida. Come yeah. on down yeah. here. We like cops. His name is he's Nick, giving Nick, bonuses. His name is Nick Davis. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's shout out he, to Nick. He told us the number, and Adam Adam was like, whoa, whoa, the hell with my keys. What? Yeah. From a hundred some thousand to fifteen hundred. It's it's. And mind you, so, so here's my question for everybody: mm. Is is people's hate for Trump? 
more important than going back to not having the ec- economy like this, to the way that everything is? Where, where, where are these voters at? So you're just happy because the mean attitude guy's not in. But you know what? As long as my feelings aren't hurt, I don't give a shit about the country. I don't give a shit about uh, the war. I don't give a shit about the economy. Like, where, where the hell is your... What are you talking about? Yell at me all fucking day. Be whatever. As long as I'm safe and the economy's good and everything's all right, I'm happy. That's me. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I think... Never underestimate the Republicans' ability to, like, shoot themselves in the foot, right, or, or fuck up their chances to win. I mean, I, I would argue that the abortion argument is another example of that, right? I mean, what the, what the hell, right? Time yeah. They, McConnell. They, yeah, they fucked yeah. up the midterm election, you know, <laughs> um, and they're, it's going to happen again, right? I have a feeling that there's, you know, again, I hate to say it because I would like to see a change in administration, right? Uh, 330 million plus people in this country and... We're heading towards another, you know, election season where it's probably going to be Biden and Trump again. I, 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 I suspect. Mm, right? That's the favorite, and that's that's incredible to me. But I, 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 you know, I'm a I'm a fan of the policies, right? You know, we gotta we gotta clear out the regulations. We gotta get the economy moving. Uh, we've got to focus, be more uh, strategic with uh, with China. And uh, I just don't, uh, I, I just don't see how the numbers get there for for Trump. Uh, unless there's just, you know, a more significant crisis. Yeah. Right. Because I think those voters who may have said, who may have said, okay, I didn't vote from the last time, but this, you know, current administration's not Shit not show. cutting it. I'm going to go for uh, the Republicans. But I think those people will probably be turning up based on the abortion issue. And I think they're going to look at that. I think a lot of those suburban women and the others who were tired of the Trump chaos, who didn't vote for him this last time. They pro- maybe they could have shifted back to the Republican, you know, and vote for for him, but I think that abortion issue is going to shut that possibility down. So I'm not particularly optimistic. We could end up with Biden Harris again, and that well, means me we're going to end up with Harris. Yeah. What? what, yeah, what was... How different is that position of what happened than what DeSantis's position is with that? Is is DeSantis's position on Roe v. Wade different than what happened right before midterms? Yeah, I don't think I don't think DeSantis is. Is I mean I know there's there's been a lot of talk about DeSantis being the guy you know possibly that could you know take this but I, I don't I don't think so I, I just don't I think outside of I don't think he's gonna care he could carry the the, the nation I don't know I, I I think that you're looking at a, a split in the numbers uh, and they're gonna be you know sitting in their foxholes shooting at each other during the primary and that's gonna damage both of them and I just I here's have what Newsom yeah. just said yeah. here's what Newsom Newsom agrees with you Gavin Newsom predicts what will happen if Ron DeSantis takes on Trump this is a Newsweek story Rob while I'm doing this find what uh, uh, Trump just uh, put out in Truth Social about Ron DeSantis it's the nicest message he's had so far by the way <laughs> California Governor Gavin Newsom predicts that if uh, DeSantis challenges Trump for 2024 Republican presidential nomination DeSantis will be defeated by Trump. Newsom said on MSNBC Inside with Jen Psaki, he's going to get rolled by Trump. Trump's just going to roll him. Newsom criticized DeSantis for attacking Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Braggs, who charged Trump with 34 counts of falsifying business documents. Newsom said DeSantis looked weak for doing so and advised DeSantis against challenging Trump for the GOP nomination. He suggested DeSantis wait a few years and actually do some of the hard work, which actually includes governing, not just Identity and culture war. So, uh, Mike, are you the kind of guy that likes this Newsom guy out oh, of California? Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Newsom is uh, when he talks about DeSantis should just focus on governing. Good God, um, oh. I'm I'm in and out of Los Angeles and and to be fair, San Francisco on a regular basis, and uh, two fantastic cities that are just being driven into the ground. And, you know, that's all under Newsom's watch. Like the guy, he's got a you know, great head of hair. Um, you know, <laughs> God bless him. But uh, I'm sure he positions himself or he's imagining himself to be the guy, right? He, he, nobody was probably happy about Buttigieg, you know, taking a lot of, you know, shots during uh, the past year than Newsom. Because I think he really feels like he's the replacement candidate. 100%. Right? And, you know, he's, he's, I'm sure he's excited about the fact that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, what do I know about about uh, politics other than you have to look at results, right? And Newsom doesn't have the results, right? So I, I don't understand, but it doesn't matter anymore. It's all about performative art, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's theater. And people, you, you, you talk about how the, the San Francisco uh, 
woman there, you know, can how can she say one thing and then talk out of the other side of her mouth, right? Shortly yep. thereafter. It's because nobody gives a shit anymore, yeah. right? Yep. Nobody fact checks, nobody and you know, so this so that's a, you know, but again, you know, I, you get I guess to your point, you get what you get, you know, you vote for sure. you know, you you vote for how how do they end up with Brandon Johnson in Chicago? How does that? Yeah. Work? Have you heard what, what the, this yeah. guy says? He's by the way? nuts. Yeah. Have you listened to some of the stuff this guy He's says a about says. cops and? Yep. It, it, uh, I mean, it's worse. It's it. But it's a Soros guy. Yeah. But it's one yeah. of Soros's guys. Of and you saw who yeah. visited the White House twelve or fourteen times last uh, <laughs> Soros' son, under right? Biden. His boy. Soros' yeah, son. Yeah, his boy. Yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, yeah. a lot of people think, well, when Soros is uh, no longer here because he's ninety some years old, it's not, his son is. As radical, if not apparently more radical than him, he's meeting with the chief of staff, and he's had all these other meetings. Yeah. And uh, by the way, can you pull up what actually I sent you about what uh, Trump said about uh, 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 DeSantis? I just sent it to the link. There you go. If you can pull that up with the hill. Oh yeah. Here's what he just said. Zoom in a little bit. Trump discourages DeSantis as candidacy would only hurt Republican Party. Okay, a, a different approach. Here's what he says. Ron DeSantis is a young man who is not doing well against me in the polls, to put it mildly. <laughs> I believe that if he decides to run for president, which will only hurt and somewhat divide a Republican Party, he will lose the cherished and massive MAGA vote. He's already saying it right up front. And never be able to successfully run for office again. I don't know about that. If he remains governor, which is what Florida voters assumed, it will be a whole different story. Just saying, but again, who knows? Some people read into this and they said the fact that he's hinting at if you don't run, I'll have you as my VP. Some are saying that'll never happen. But uh, what do you think about what he just said here about uh, DeSantis? It's one of the nicer things he said in the last <laughs> few months is not calling him Meatball Ron or Ron DeSanctimonious <laughs> or, you know, uh, peddling stories about him uh, hanging out with underage women. So that's that's good for him, um, which... There's actually some truth, you know, to use some truth social in it, that that he might uh, lose the massive cherished uh, MAGA vote. Um, I, I, one of the things that I actually wanted to bring about DeSantis that you just brought about, and this is some one of the things, because I've been an advocate of saying I would vote for DeSantis. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about the fact that, because you brought up abortions and how, like, that's going to potentially shoot, uh, Republicans shoot themselves in the foot, especially mm -hmm. to suburban women or just women across the country. You know, it's supposed to be a red wave in the midterms. It ended up being like a red like drop uh, in the bucket. Yeah. Um, Florida, backed by DeSantis, is trying to pass a six-week abortion bill. Six weeks. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Pull this up. And I, apparently it, it was approved. Now, listen, you can debate the abortion all you want, but uh, six weeks, some women, you know, don't even know they're pregnant within a month, the first month. And I think the stats show 43% um, of pregnancies hap uh, of abortions happen within six weeks. 36% happen between seven and nine weeks. 13% between 10 and 13 weeks. So I think a lot of people have sort of used like the 12-week number mm -hmm. as sort mm -hmm. of a, you know, comfortable number that you can wrap your head around. But six weeks, so if, back to your point about yeah. DeSantis, if that's your message that you're going to be more of a moderate and you know kind of not play to the MAGA wing, but also uh, get some of the disaffected liberals and independents on your side, a six-week abortion yeah. bill? You think that's going to get women to vote for you? Yeah, no, I know. Homie, it's, don't play that. Well, and this this is why it's 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 always been one of those issues, right? It's like you're talking about you know reformed entitlements, right? I mean, it, every time. The Republican Party wades into the abortion issue. You know, it. I, I don't get how do they how do they not look at this and go, okay, you know what? We got to sit down and come up with. Nobody lives in the fucking center anymore, so nobody. You don't have anybody in Washington saying, let's all sit down mm -hmm. as reasonable people and come up with something, right? That that makes sense that both sides can live with. You have you one know? centrist. You have yeah. Joe Manchin. Yeah. yeah, basically exactly. that's it. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think I don't, I don't know that you know. I Bless you. look if if DeSantis was the Republican nominee, yeah, I'd vote for him, right? Um, but I, I think Trump's correct in the sense that you know all he's got to do is kind of you know start that attack plan, and you know his voting base is not going to suddenly mm -hmm. you know, embrace Ron DeSantis, right? So there's a I think there's a real problem coming down the pike for the Republican Party that that you know typically they'll just ignore for a while uh and then you know it'll be sort of all hands on deck and panic you know leading up to the election and 
But if you're DeSantis, you don't know what's going to happen four or five years from now. You can't predict, you know, Florida might have a hurricane. It might be an absolute mess here. You never know what kind of six-week abortion bill. All of a sudden, approval right. ratings go down. Right now, his stock is as high as ever. That's, yeah. You have to seize yeah. the moment. Carpe diem. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I don't think – yeah, like, you just nailed it. Like, think about it. If, if Trump runs this one and, and Ron doesn't – Nobody's. He's gonna be. Literally, could well, be irrelevant. It could. He, people just be like, okay, just stay in Florida, like whatever. But just, it's crazy though that that's all the Democratic Party has uh, to un, offer. Unless, is news. unless, unless, huh. if Trump does back him up a hundred percent to run afterwards, because think about it this way: say Trump runs four years, mm -hmm. okay, okay, and DeSantis goes behind him. I want you to think about this uh, here real quick. Say DeSantis says. All right, I'll get involved a little bit just to get a little bit of experience, and I'll run. And apparently he can't run until July because he has to mm. get his governorship job in place before oh, wow. he announces that he's oh, running. Wow. Some date like that. I okay. think it's July or Got June. You. But I think it's July. So he goes in, and they duke it out for five months, mm. whatever the time, six months, five months. And then within two, three months, okay, guess what? Game. It's yours. Yeah. Perfect. They talk to each other just like Ted Cruz lined up. And Ted Cruz like, let's go, let's roll. Trump can flip real quick. If you're going to get his back, he'll flip, right? So DeSantis <laughs> comes and backs him up, and they run. Now watch. During Trump's second term, if DeSantis got his back 100%, guess what Trump's going to do for DeSantis? Put him Trump's going to be his number one flag carrier mm -hmm. and help him become president. And then DeSantis can have 12 years, uh, eight years, which means it'll be Trump, DeSantis, 12 years. He, now, that doesn't mean... A DeSantis' camp listening to this, they're saying, oh, you have no clue what the hell you're talking about. Maybe you're right. Maybe we don't. We're just mm. talking, guys. We're not in your world. Mm. And, you know, and you're right about the fact that this guy was the number one governor in what he did, above and beyond everybody else. We're in Florida because of this guy. You're from L.A. and New York. I'm from L.A. And I lived in Texas for five years. And I like the governor in Texas. He does a great job, oh, Abbott. Abbott. Yeah, yeah. But we moved here because it gave the balance of Florida and Texas together. I love the beach in Idaho, but I love it in Florida more. <laughs> right? So yeah, th favorite beaches. This, this Idaho is, beach life. That's right. This, this is the difference between this. Now, if you find this clip with Biden being asked about running for re-election, I don't know if you saw that. If you just go, if you have that. At the he, Easter egg hunt? Yeah, he's what, at the Easter egg what hunt. What is he saying, Pat? What is he saying? While, while he's looking for it, I'll just read it to you on what happened with this. So uh, I'm planning on running. For By the way, you have to really understand what he's saying. Matter of fact, I dare you to fully understand what he's saying. Go ahead and play the clip. Watch it here. That's so the doctor. This is a fantastic event, Listen. one of my favorites of the year. I was just wondering, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, will you be uh, taking part in the Easter egg rolls uh, after planning on after 2024? Well, I plan on <laughs> at least three or four more Easter egg rolls. At least three or four more? Maybe, maybe five. Maybe five? <laughs> maybe maybe so, six. So what the hell? Are you, are you saying that, uh, that you would be... Uh, taking part in uh, our upcoming election in 2024. Well, I'll, either, so I'll, that, either, I'll either be rolling an egg or you know, being the, the, good, you know, the guy who's pushing them out. Come on, help, a, bro help, help a brother out. Make no, some news no, for no, me. No. I, well, I, I plan on running out, but we're not prepared to announce it yet. All right. Well, <laughs> Come on, back, what if you so back nice up 10 saying, seconds? What do you say? I'm planning what on running. Said, Al, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. Either roll an egg or push one out. In our upcoming election in 2024. I'll either be rolling an egg or being the good, you know, the guy Guy who's pushing them out. Come on, help, a, bro help a brother this out. This is the Make part right here. No, 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 I, well, I'm, I plan on running out, but we're not prepared to announce it yet. Just I'm planning on running out, but we're so not nice prepared to announce it. I was waiting for I was waiting, yeah. Rob, I was waiting for him to go, and Al, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I was waiting for that to come out. Because yeah. he loves yeah. saying Well, that's the like announcement. Him. It's he not the official it. announcement. He but just said it without saying it with an egg coming out, whatever the hell that Yeah, how's he pushing that egg out? That's or I'm on a roll, man. Roll on, roll on, but you I know, I just wish we had one honest, well, one I, honest at interviewer. Least, at least, yeah. if he's, he, maybe he identifies as a chicken. You, <laughs> there's I nothing mean, wrong with that. There's Daniel. nothing wrong with maybe that, Pat. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. But yeah. I just it's wish one is. time, one person interviewing just stops and goes like this. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. What the hell are you talking about? Say what, buddy? Yeah, no, Say what, buddy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody ever checks him. Trump was always yelled at by Jim Acosta and everybody. Not one time. By the way, time. he didn't talk like this before. I've heard him give speeches. He's getting worse. No, I've heard him give speeches yeah. where you're kind of like, okay, okay good. You know, he's, he's got some stuff that's mm -hmm. solid. He, he didn't talk like this. This is recent. And Pat, <laughs> notice, but, but, but it's gonna be, he's going to be 82, right? 
by the next election. If he gets reelected, oh my he'll be God. he'll be 86 years old oh at the end of his term. Oh my God, that's, 86 that year old has president. to be a concern. If oh, you, what do you everybody. mean? Of course yeah. it is. If you can push an egg out at 86, <laughs> you got to respect it. You should be president, man. Oh yeah, it's he's doing. Look, he he successfully ran a campaign from his basement for the most part, of right? Of course. And, you know, again, I, it, the Democrats, you know, love them, you love them hate yeah. them, right? They, they tend to do messaging and campaigns and communication well because they stick to it, right? Mm-hmm. They, they, they don't tend to splinter. And so I think his strategists are basically saying, look, why jump in the fight right now? Hey, take, take all the time you want, right? You don't, you're in the, the White House already. You don't need to announce yet. And he could push us off, and while he's doing that, he's kind of freezing out the other options, like Newsom and these others, right? Yeah, so, right. So we've got, you know, we've got a really interesting situation here, yeah, where I think both sides are kind of getting locked in yep. to before we even get to the uh, the primaries. But, but shit's about to get so it's, dirty. Uh, but, it's going to get so dirty. I, I, I think this next one's going to be nasty. <laughs> I think it's going to be nasty. Anyways, we got to get to the end of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So Nathaniel Rodriguez gave a hundred dollars super chat. Good conversation. Andrew Huff, uh, there's a there's not a regime that the U.S. via the CIA and the State Department have wanted to coup and topple. BRICS and the recent peace deals between countries led by China and Russia, plus Trump as president. Why they don't want him in 2024? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. See what's going to happen. There. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what are you working on right now so people can follow you? What what, what are you working on? Uh, outside of your new uh, uh, office you're building in San Francisco. But outside of that, what else, what else are you working on? Building my secret lair in the Mission District because uh, the representation seems solid. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this thing goes so fast. Great. It's, it's, it's such a great show. I mean, it just moves it. so damn fast. Um, that I'm surprised that we're at the end of it. You're a fan uh, favorite, by the way. Oh, you're a really? fan favorite. Not only do we love you, wow. everybody loves you. Oh, you're, you're, you're a fan you're, favorite. Clearly, you're 10K live right yeah. now. No, your your viewers are you. clearly terrible judges of character <laughs> and entertainment value. But um, you know what? I uh, hey for uh, for all your information and security needs, it's Portman Square Group. I got to say that Portman because Square. <laughs> why not? That's a that's a great one. And then yeah, I uh, thank you very much, Rob. I uh, pushed oh, out nice. an, an audio book uh, a couple months. Months ago, called Company Rules. Uh, it's a very easy listen. Um, they asked me to do an audio book because I didn't know enough big words to do a whole <laughs> book, <laughs> and I narrate it myself, so it's very soothing. Sick. That voice I could go to sleep. Company that. Yeah. Rules, <laughs> or people every- do. Nobody good <laughs> yeah, and people you don't do. need a soothing. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I know about business, I learned from the CIA. Wow. Yeah, and it's got uh, it, it's got just some principles I took away. Look, I, I what I, what happened was I. I got out of the agency, and everybody, in, in my old colleagues who were fantastic, I loved my time in, but they were all like, what the hell are you going to do now? You have no, how are you going to, what? Yeah, you, you know? sit home. And I had to leave because I, I was raising a daughter, uh, a single dad, and I was like, okay, you know, I got to do something that keeps me close to home somewhat. And, but all, all my guys were like, yeah, I don't know what the hell you're going to be doing because you, your, your skill set is not going to transfer to the private sector. And, and what I found was, after starting a business, um, was that there were certain things that I'd learned from the agency that actually transferred very well to the private sector, right? These were my rules. It's not like the agency hands you a book that says, here's the company rules when you first sign on. These were just the things I took away. And hopefully people enjoy it. They take some bit away and they, it helps them and not just in, in business but in private life i love it well look, rob let's make sure we put the link all over the place chat and description folks go order mike baker's book and i'm sure mike will be doing this again in the next i hope so. 17 months going into the election man. it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. wild anyways thanks for coming thank out thank you man thank gang, you gang have a good thank one you. we'll do it again on thursday take care everybody bye-bye bye-bye